Hey family, today I want to share with you another story about my own life. You know, um, I remember the first time when I walked into a church in Bangladesh, the pastor Asar came, my first pastor. Um, I asked him what he can do for me is to disciple me, teach me the Bible. I was hungry to want to learn about the Word of God. I was reading it. And I, someone gave me the Bible, as you know, in prison, and I could read it. I could see what God had already spoken to me, all the stories I was saying, it's written in there. But I knew there is so much more in the Word of God. And I wanted, I was hungry, I wanted to eat these words. I wanted to understand the depth of it. And so when I met a man of God, I said, please, 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 please. I would do anything to learn about the Word of God. And he said to me, okay, come and, uh, at 10 a.m. and I will teach you. I showed up early uh, to the church because I wanted to learn. And then when I showed up, you know, in Bangladesh, you know, and maybe the pastor on, on intention, I don't know, he made me wait. I was 15 minutes early and he was 15 minutes late. I was sitting outside half an hour for him to call me in. And when I came in, he said to me, Afshin, I want you to open your Bible. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And I was like, okay. And it says, to obey is better than sacrifice. Now we can go. I remember that uh, verse so well. And it's the story of Saul. Uh, when he went and he killed everybody except some of the animals he kept. And God said to him, uh, Samuel said to him, God doesn't want your sacrifice, he wants your obedience. So my pastor said to me, Afshin, anything and everything you do in your life is going to be a sacrifice. And God is not interested in your sacrifice. He is interested in your obedience. The second part was the next day I showed up Again, he was fashionably late. I was uh, eagerly early. And then when I show him to the office, he says, open your, uh, your Bible to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And I said, okay. And I read this. It says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But... When you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. <laughs> I just thought to myself, okay. And he said to me, Afshin, remember, there are many temptations that will come to you. And when temptations come, it wants to overwhelm you. And remember that you may think it's beyond your ability, but it is not beyond your, uh, your ability, because God knows what you are capable of. So it may be beyond your ability, but it's not beyond your capability, you know, taking it on. I uh, saw that day of temptations of uh, lust and glory and all these kind of things, you know. But I got to tell you, as a Christian, my greatest temptation was not really falling into sexual sin, even though I have fallen into sexual sin. It wasn't into a sin of judgment, even though I have judged people. It wasn't the temptation of falling into, I don't know, laziness, even though I have or depression or this or that, even though I have fallen into all of those things. I think the greatest temptation that I had, that I struggled with, that, I was, that endangered me uh, permanently was me believing actually my calling is done. That actually the body of Christ would be better off without me. That actually if God was to just put me aside somehow, that would save his name a lot of pain, a lot of shame because all that I could do is bring more shame to the name of Jesus. You see, I didn't trust myself. After all of my failures, I didn't know how to trust myself. I thought, how can God trust me? Why should he trust me? After all of my failures, 
Why would you want to have anything to do with me? But it was as if he couldn't let go. And I didn't know how to understand that. And one day the Lord said to me, actually, I will not let you go because you're not a child that I found. I did not take you from the side of the street that I would just kick you out and throw you to, into the street the first time you fail. You're the one whom I have so desired with all of my heart. I set you apart from before you were, you were born. I knew you by name. You are close to my heart. I have fearfully and wonderfully made you. I just didn't understand how could God speak these words over me after all of my failures. In fact, I thought all of my life I asked as a young Christian, I remember in Bangladesh one day I said, Lord Jesus, you know my future. I will not ask for anything, but one thing I ask for myself, and that is that if you know that I am going to shame you one day or shame the gospel of Jesus Christ, please kill me the day before. Take my life away because I don't want to bring more shame to you. I don't want to have anything to do with that. In my worst failures of life, I thought so, so, uh, I felt so disappointed, so broken, and in a way angry because in my life I never asked Jesus for anything. I never asked the Father for anything for myself. You know, I know there are a lot of Christians that go around and say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I was the one that was only asking, Lord, give them, give them, give them the Holy Spirit, give them healing, give them revelation of who Jesus is. I had only asked one thing for myself, and that one thing he did not give me. And I was so upset, I couldn't trust myself with all of these failures I had done. And the Lord said to me, Look, Afshin, I knew all of your failures. I knew the day I came to you, where you're going to fail, when you're going to fail, how you're going to fail. But I chose you. And I will not give up on you because it is your calling that I have given to you, Afshin. It is beyond your ability but it is not beyond your capability. It's not beyond your tolerance. Even though it is beyond what you can achieve with your own wisdom or strength. And I want to say this to you, Afshin. If you remember the verse that your pastor gave you, don't let this temptation overwhelm you. You see, up to that moment, I saw temptation is when, you know, some beautiful girl walks by or something, it's a, a sinful thought against a, a sexual sinful thought, a lustful thought, or a greedy thought, or this or that. But I realized that the greatest temptation that I had was the temptation of believing the lie of Satan saying, like, you, you see, you have done something maybe so big that there is absolutely no redemption to it. You are such a huge failure and such a shame to the name of Jesus that you're good for nothing, Afshin. The temptation of believing that and positioning myself in a way that God's calling is no longer valid in my life was greater than any other temptation I had ever faced. And I remember that verse that my pastor had taught me so many years earlier as if the Holy Spirit knew the lies that Satan was going to say to me many years later. And I remember that I realized, oh my goodness, God had tried to equip me and given me the weapon to stand against the lie of the enemy. Why am I sharing that today with you? I'm sharing this because I'm feeling in recent days there are so many men and women of God that have taken that temptation and they are saying, look, in my daily failures of life, I am way too much of a shame for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will be, the gospel would be better off without me. 
the body of Christ will be better off without me. They have let go of their calling and they have believed that lie of Satan. And I want to say this to you. As a fellow soldier, as a fellow brother, as someone that has fallen so many times, I can tell you this. That is a lie, don't believe. God knew you before you knew him. God called you before you called on him. He had chosen you and he revealed to you that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life because he knows there is absolutely nothing that you can do that can somehow be beyond the power of forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus. Not angels, nor light, nor light, nor death can separate you. But you can choose to live in the mentality of a separated life. Don't allow Satan to deceive you, my brother, my sister. Come back. Let everyone know about your failures. And let them know that even though you may be beyond their limitations and understanding of grace for your life. But I assure you, you are never close to the, the borders, the depth, the height, the width, the length of the love and the grace and the mercy of a heaven that is provided by the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. You're never beyond that. I want to say this to you. That, you know, often we think, you know, things here on earth are so precious. And we think the most precious thing here on earth is like gold. But the heaven's pavements, the most common thing in heaven is gold. So what um, in heaven is so normal and so abundant here is so rare. And I want to say this to you. The dust of the earth represents the, everything that we can be fed from. Everything that we need. The dust of heaven is the forgiveness, the grace, and the mercy of God. It's so common, so much of it exists. And that dust here on earth is the most precious thing. It will overwhelm any sin, any failure you have ever committed. And it's there to pick you up and restore you to the calling God has given you. Your calling may and always will be beyond your abilities because God never meant for you to establish his calling in your life by your own strength or your own knowledge or your wisdom. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That is his doing in you. All you need to do is remember the calling is beyond your ability, but not beyond your capability, not beyond your tolerance, not beyond what you can go through. And if it ever becomes more than what you can bear, he will give you a way out so you can stand under it. Stand under it. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Please tell your friends to join our family. I love you guys. Till next time.